Hello everybody, my name is Alex and this is the second episode of our podcast, Reframing Modern Medicine. Our mission is to bring awareness on the evolving treatment choices for the human condition. This episode is the backstory on why our host from the last episode, Dr. Ricardo Rivas, became a chiropractor and what else he's been up to. We also now have a video recording alongside our audio, so you can be a viewer as well as being a listener. We hope you enjoy, and here's more information. All right. Welcome to Reframing Modern Medicine. This is our second episode, and I'm Alex. I have here with me Dr. Anthony Marino and Dr. Ricardo Rivas. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Anthony Marino. Most of my patients and friends call me Dr. Tony or Anthony. Um, I am the co-owner of the Las Vegas Chiropractor here with Dr. Ricardo Rivas, uh, the owner of the Serenity Center Massage, and the owner of uh, Market Kings Marketing Agency for Chiropractors, Acupunctures, and Massage Therapists. I like that. It's sold everything. It's wonderful. All right. Uh, yeah, and I'm Dr. Rivas, Ricardo Rivas. I go by Rico, and uh, we're here for the interview. Last episode, he was the one that was doing the interviewing but today he's going to be the one getting interviewed and how the tables have turned <laughs> yeah they turned into this thing it's great <laughs> so I, I i wanted to ask when 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 did you start working here las vegas cairo uh we started i believe it was in february right of last year 2022 yeah and we started uh in the same building here in las vegas in the paradise re- area off of Tropicana and Maryland, roughly around Tropicana, Maryland, Tropicana and, and Tamaris. And we started, this was in February of last year, and we started in a smaller office, so it was a much smaller office. And Tony was the one, he's the originator, and I just jumped in. He said, hey, man, you want to get in on this? I said, sure, why not? All right, so it's still, it's still fairly new. Um, so what were you doing before this? Because you've only been here for about a year, a year and a half now. So yeah. what were you up to before all this? So... Uh, yeah, August 21st, August 2021, I think it was the 21st, I graduated. But by that time, I'd already contacted Tony, which was like uh, the summer. I forgot why I called you, but I was like, hey, Tony. Uh, like, you, from what I remember, uh, you originally originally called me because you were trying to figure out how to get dual licensed here in California and Nevada. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, and, then, and then I kind of went into my spiel. Yeah, that's right. And then he sold me Las Vegas. And so then... At that point, by the time I graduated, the plan was to move out of, uh, I was living in, at the time with my uncle, which is in Whittier, and I'd just been divorced probably about, I don't know, a year by that point, and I had nowhere really to live, to be honest with you, and I have a friend that lives out here in Vegas, and his name's Eric, and he lives in Centennial Hills, and Tony sold me the, gave me the pitch, elevator pitch, and then he went ahead and he said, hey, you should come down to Vegas. There's a lot of there's a lack of uh, Spanish speaking doctors. There's a lack of professionals in general, and you're really gonna do well here. I recommend it. Taxes, blah blah blah. He sold me, so I was like, okay, sure. So my plan from the get go was to start with him. I started at the joint uh, chiropractic. That's where he was working. So then, at which point, Tony was like, hey man, so I'm starting this business, you know, and he'd been working on it since we were in chiropractic school, right, college. Uh- yeah, but I'm, I had the idea to, I wanted to open something since I first started school, but I was working on this specific office like uh, probably five months before yeah. we opened. So, yeah. So Tony set everything up. He he found the location, yada, yada. He named it, et cetera. Then I jumped in. I came in. He said, hey, you want to come on board? So I did. I brought my Cox table and I said, let's get to work. And we opened up together. We were part-time. Uh, at initially and then as time went on then we jumped in and we did full time both of us and it took him a little longer to be full time I had to convince him quite a bit yeah. quite the struggle I'd say yeah for a while a little battling back and yeah, forth yeah yeah I think I, I was just I was just nervous about m- making the transition and being 100% on my own yeah um, and then you really kind of convinced me yeah. that I should stop being a little chicken <laughs> yeah that's pretty much it alright so you 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 guys have kind of been working on this since, or Dr. Tony has been kind of working on this since Cairo School. You guys both went to Cairo School together. Yeah. Um, so how was Cairo School? Can you describe that for me? Uh, for myself, I, I, it was a, it was a quite the struggle. Um, at the time, what was very interesting is that at the time when we, when I started chiropractic college, I, 
I had just learned the summer prior that I had a learning disability, which I did not know. And because of that new information, I was allowed more, I was allowed extra time and a few other things. A learning disability is a condition in the brain that causes difficulties comprehending or processing information and can be caused by several different factors. Some examples of learning disabilities include, but are not limited to, ADHD, dyslexia, ADD, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, and dyspraxia. And that allowed me to kind of be within the group and still manage my time well because I have difficulty uh, with short-term memory. It's below average. And so my, my working memory is, uh, that's what it's called, is below average. So then that leads me to essentially have a slower ability to, uh, what's the term, my brain's going black, to process information. Short-term memory is basically information that your brain holds for a small amount of time, and it's often around 30 seconds. Working memory is similar to short-term memory. It's memory that you hold for a short amount of time, just like short-term memory, except that you hold it for a bit longer, and this kind of memory is also used in the manipulation of information. Like yeah, everyone live else. proof it's, of it, these conditions. It's, it's happening right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, as we went through Cairo school, when we first started, the program was set for, I think it's nine, nine trimesters, and then I went ahead and I started with nine trimesters, but it was insane. Like, they, they gave us, like, I don't know, in, like, nine classes or eight. I forgot how many classes it was in the beginning. And then I got to the midterm, and I'm like, this is insane. I can't manage this. I was practically crying when I told the, the counselor, what do I do? And she said, oh, we have a program that's a little slower, and it's four years. And I said, sign me up. And, and that's how it started. And at that point, you know, that was the first, that was the second semester I think I had gone full-time to college because most of the time I'd be going part-time to community college and I'd gone full-time to like a trade school and all this other stuff I'd gone to you know and and also massage college and stuff like that but however this was a little more difficult and complicated because it required Monday through Friday uh, you know classes back to back it quizzes every day and it was I'm not gonna lie it was pretty overwhelming I was at some point I I feel I was practically in tears talking to at the time my um, ex well my ex-wife now but at the time my fiance about the whole situation and I thought I couldn't do it because it was just it's just overwhelming it consumes your life you have to let go of everything at least for myself I can't speak for Dr. Tony he's a child genius but for myself I have to put myself bury myself in the books and just constantly be working at it and try to adapt it's like what what do they say it's like uh, drinking water out of a fire hose they're just fire blasting hydrant, you in the face yeah. yeah they're just blasting you in the face so it's it's quite overwhelming but um you know luckily i i had uh, the support of uh, at the time like i said uh my fiance at that point and also my classmates and dylan who was um who's currently working with us right it's, yeah. last week's chiropractor uh, we, new, we convinced him to move out of california member. come here we're gonna convince you all yeah <laughs> so then he came down and he decided uh, to work with us now and at the time when we were in college he was practically my best friend in chiropractic college because we studied we were like an old couple man we were just fighting all the time arguing and that's how the information kind of stuck but um yeah it was a lot of driving long nights uh, you know just stress galore i mean you can only imagine the the amount of um stress that a person could have when you're when you're working full-time or doing anything that's full-time that's already difficult but then you add education you have to study you have to review every day read etc cetera, etc cetera. so yeah just just for context he says full-time but we basically live in school so a lot of Cairo school Cairo school has got a lot of class hours um you know medical school has a ton of information but a lot of it's, um, you know, do it at your own pace, do it at home. You got a test. You got 13 tests tomorrow. Kyrie school's similar, but there's a lot of class time. So we get to school at 8. Stayed there till 5, maybe 6 or 7. Um, you have weekend classes. And so, I mean, there's there's months where you're just spending nine hours a day in school every day. Um, it's kind of like going back to high school twice. It's the worst. You got to say goodbye to your uh, personal life. There's nothing. There's, you basically have time for nothing. Yeah. And so you kind of you, you kind of went to Cairo school at a, 
a later point in your life. I don't <laughs> I don't mean to call you old or whatever, <laughs> but uh, most people I Sorry. feel like decide their careers, decide what they're gonna do for the rest of their life right out of high school, and they kind of yeah. they kind of go to college right after, or they don't go to college. They just start doing whatever they want to do right after their school. So I want to ask, what motivated you to go to Cairo school at that point in your life? Um, at that time, I was I actually worked in aerospace for 15 years. I worked for a company called Northrop Grumman. And at the time, I was a test technician. I got in there through going to a trade school that no longer exists. It's called ITT Tech. And at that point, we, I hadn't even graduated school, and they hired me. And the company was called TRW. It was converted to Northrop. And they work with satellite and communication systems. So I worked there for 15 years. I worked on satellites. I worked on unmanned, um, uh, the unmanned planes and stuff, drones, uh, a variety of things. The James course. Webb. Oh yeah, and well, yeah, those are my favorite things. So I worked yeah, on the, I forgot on the, I worked on the James Webb Telescope as a test technician. So testing board level, box level stuff. It, to me, that was like my pride and joy at the very end because I knew the impact it was going to have in society and and just answer so many questions for mankind that we're we've, we're trying to understand our past, and I really enjoyed that. Even though the work is pretty much the same with any program, but that program was special to me because I knew the legacy that it would have. Uh, for the future and, and the information we have. And, and the James Webb Telescope, you, you may or may not know, is looking out into space using uh, infrared to try to look in the direction of the Big Bang. And so we can try to determine, you know, what's beyond the Big Bang. Like, what are the clouds that we can't see past? Let's use infrared to see. And it's also looking at planets and other star systems to see if they have signatures, like our planet, in terms of gas signatures. So if there may be, like, possibly earth-like and maybe there might be life there or similar to our life anyway so it's doing quite a quite a few other things and and it's been an that was an amazing time at least for me um but the, the reason i got into it was because i was kind of tired of working there because i love to help people and when you help people at that that type of environment they're all engineers engineers are very direct and about getting the work done and the product you know it's, it's just things you know you have to work on things and software etc I was more about people and trying to help them. I would chat too much sometimes, but overall I was kind of over it because you also required you to have like a security clearance. It's like they tell you, hey, you know, take off all your clothes, take out all your bank statements, all your information and lay it on the table and let us know all about you. But by the way, the amount of information you're going to have access to once we approve this is going to be like looking through a door, through a little peephole and only seeing that much information. So I thought that was unfair. I said that doesn't make sense. I don't get to see everything, right? So they want to know. They want to know a lot about you, but you can't know yeah. anything about them. Yeah, and it's the way the the structure of um, government contracts, are, uh, you know, secrets are kind of compart compartmentalized. And so at that point, I figured, you know, I'm over this. I need to find something else. So I requested a layoff. I laid, you know, I got the layoff. I started massage college just prior to the layoff. And in anticipation I and I went into massage just because I enjoyed it I was like yeah, I love a massage who doesn't like a massage right and so I thought it was a great idea I started learning I realized how powerful it was at that point and then when I got laid off by this point I had met my uh, like I said my girlfriend which turned into my fiance which turned into my wife which turned into my ex-wife and she um, we we moved in together by that point we were living together and I was still I still had m enough money saved and I she has back issues. She's got something called spinal stenosis. I can already hear it now. Ding! Spinal stenosis is spinal stenosis is when the spinal canal is narrowed. This can put pressure on the spinal cord and nerves that travel through the spine. Anyway, so spinal stenosis with your spinal column, right? It narrows and she had some trauma she didn't recall. And so I was trying to massage her, work on her, and I also had a friend who had a T4 burst fracture. His name is Frank. A burst fracture is an injury to the spine in which the vertebral body is crushed or compressed enough to break and can send fragments of your bone throughout your spine. And Frank uh, was, you know, had had the accident. It was, it was very difficult because he was a very uh, active gentleman. He was... He was like my, he was, we're friends. I mean, we lived together, we're roommates, we traveled, etc. So working on him, working on my girlfriend, I was working a part-time. I convinced my, my girlfriend then at the time to drop her job and then pursue her, her passion to be a, so, a counselor. So she started studying, got her master's degree, achieved that while we were living together. And right when I ran out of money, 
or about the time I was running out of money, she said, um, you know, or prior to that, she said, you need to figure out what you want to do with your life. Like, you need now it's your turn to study. I'm almost done. You got to figure it out. And so my wife has spinal stenosis. Friend's got a T4 burst fracture. He's paralyzed on the chest down. I thought to myself, well, it appears to me the spine's kind of calling me because I was working on both of them at the time. And so I started on the path to going to chiropractic college, preparing, taking all the prerequisites, et cetera. And, you know, the rest is kind of history. So you were most motivated by the people around you, your loved ones, to kind of get into chiropractic. It seems like you really yeah. have a passion for helping people out. And even with, uh, you were talking about you working on the, the James Webb, right? The telescope? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned how that would, that would leave like a legacy, right? Helping a bunch of people trying to see past the Big Bang and everything. Um, have you always had a passion for helping people? I don't know. I was born this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard go. that song. Uh, I would say, I would say yes. I mean, I was born as a, a happy child in general. I remember my brother's ex-girlfriend telling me she would see me in middle school and high school. She'd be like, you always had a giant smile on your face. Don't know why, but I always did. And I think truly, and then Tony can attest to this, is that what, what's really occurring in our mind is that we're, we're trying to help people. And we're trying to help people because for whatever reason, we lose sight of ourselves and we're really helping others so we can help ourselves. So we're kind of, we've now become a form of a healer, right? We're healers in, in a way. And we are doing it because we're really truly trying to heal ourselves. That's really the, the key to all this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I feel like um, from one, from a philosophical standpoint that I've heard about, you know, a lot of people when they're chasing happiness, they'll either try to chase it through empowering and ha themselves and other people are more inclined to do it by empowering and helping others to get that sense of belonging you know um and it, most of the time it's really healthy to create healers uh but sometimes if you're not careful it'll you're kind of taking out of yourself to give to others yeah yeah I'm t i mean so this is body but, work it's really yeah, what it is but yeah. you know I, that's why it's important and then kind of the way you, you live your life and i've seen at least in my, from what i've seen is that you know you're equally working on being a better healer and better clinician but you're also working on making sure that you're taking care of yourself you know yeah yeah i mean yeah i i i, I think it's just you know, you want to help your family, you want to help your community, you want to help people. And at this age, because I'm older, I, I have this yearning to help as many people as I can. At this point, once I realized that I was in the I was in a career where it was OK for the time, made money, it was great experience. But now moving into this career, it's one where you provide such a huge impact on a daily basis that I mean, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I've I've personally been treated by Rico. Um, I came in around February of this year. Um, at a I think I had a disc bulge, right? Disc bulge. Um, disc bulges occur when the spongy center of a disc in the vertebrae pushes out through a tear in the outer rubbery portion of the disc. A bulging disc can push against the spinal cord and nerve roots, leading to severe pain and problems with mobility. This is what Alex had in this case. Couldn't even sit down without being in any type of pain. I couldn't go to school for like two to three months and I came here. Um, and I originally, I was first getting treated by Dr. Tony and then uh, I had uh, Rico treat me for a bit. And now I, I'm pretty much fine. I'm sitting down right now. You'll be able, you can see right now I'm sitting down fine. I'm not in any pain, discomfort. Um, so yeah, you guys really, really are healers. I mean, it's helped a bunch, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I mean, th I think that's uh, the pursuit is is across the board, and it, it's not necessarily even you don't have to become a chiropractor or a massage therapist or any kind of like doctor or nurse. It's just sometimes it's innately in you, and you just want to reach out and help people. Like Tony, I know Tony likes to like give money to like the homeless people, and he's like, I I just feel terrible. I want to. We help out in different ways. It may not be the same, but. You know, we, we try to provide the best we can because we know we're in a very fortunate position and very blessed to be where we are today. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and a lot of it's not about like having magic hands. It's about <laughs> uh, it's about knowing how to help people help people's bodies 
heal itself. And so I like to give the shout out to the human body for being able to withstand so much of it. And really what we do, at least now I feel, is just figuring out how to take out the things that are blocking it from um, from doing what it wants to do, which is feel better. Um, and that sounds a little bit straight chiropractic from there, but <laughs> yeah, keep no going. subluxation. Pre- preach on, brother. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and this is this is true because um, my when I had a disc bulge, right? You, Doctor Rivas, you mentioned that um, if I had just gone to any type of doctor, right, they would have recommended surgery for it. And um, just with your treatments, it it healed fine. Like I didn't need any type of surgery. Um, all I did, I just got some imaging done. Uh, we found out what was wrong with me. I have um spinal stenosis, right? That's where the uh, my spine is just too small. Yeah. Um, it's narrowing. Yeah, yours is just abnormally just smaller. You you essentially you have the spine of a of someone that's much younger and smaller. I would say just smaller person in general. That's that's what your spine is. So it it, it shouldn't be as small as it is. It, it for whatever reason it didn't develop uh, to the size to support your body. So it's much smaller. So you're more susceptible to to disc bulges and injuries because you have less space compared to like myself and Dr. Tony or maybe the average person about your build. Yeah, and so just from these treatments here, my body kind of worked on healing itself, right? It encouraged you guys encouraged the body to heal itself. Yeah. Um, and so I think I think that's I think that's pretty cool. Um, I didn't need any type of surgery, nothing like that. And so going going back to um, the legacy, you mentioned one. You mentioned you worked on the James Webb because I wanted to leave a legacy. Uh, what type of legacy do you want to leave behind, like in the future? Like, do you? Well, I, I, I feel that I've already done it a little bit. I mean, uh, Tony and I, we both, you remember, <laughs> we're in Cairo school, we both started clubs. Mm-hmm. You know, I was a part of two of them. And Tony, I think you were part of two as well. Uh, uh, well, I was part of like five, but I was like <laughs> deeply. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have ADHD, just, <laughs> just so you know. ADHD is a learning disability that stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. People with ADHD may have trouble paying attention, controlling impulsive behaviors, or may be overly active. (laughs) Oh, and so it was hard not to be a part of everything. Uh, But we both were like the creators of two separate clubs. Yeah. 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 And they're both pretty popular. Yeah. Yeah. That was so that, but because I'm older, like back to going to my age, because of my age, I knew that sitting in the classroom with people like Tony, I mean, Tony was very motivated. There's other individuals that weren't. People are just trying to get by and just trying to get through school because it's so complicated, so overwhelming, so difficult that your your thought is just, let me get to it. And then when I get it, I'm going to get a good job and I'm going to be able to provide and help people from, from my own family, et cetera. For me, I, I knew I was going to, I was going to do well because I had the confidence coming in from massage and working with individuals. So I knew that I would be okay. I was trying to build from the foundation of massage up and, and improve on my skill set. And that's what chiropractic did. However, I also knew that within the school, because I'm Latino, my family's from El Salvador, there's a lot of Spanish pe- speaking people within that community that were the schools located in Whittier. And so I took it upon myself. I said, you know what's interesting is that there's all these Spanish speaking patients. However, there's no Spanish course, there's no class. And so a buddy of mine, uh, Mikey, Mikey's like, hey, you know, it'd be great if we could like start something like that. And he was on that track where it's like insane. You're going 100 miles per hour. And I was on the, a slightly slower track. So then I took it upon myself. I took his idea. I listened to him. I go, that's great. And I took that idea. And then myself and, um, oh, geez, I'm forgetting his name already. Um, another gentleman that we... Uh, that was a PA. Oh, my God. I forgot his name already. That's terrible. He was also the co-founder with me. He wrote a few things. He was a PA student, which is a physician's assistant. And so then he went ahead and we both got together, started the club. We started creating material, generating material from some of the material he had. I had my uh, other individuals that were part of members, Mikey and the other group members. It was like four or five of us that were there. And they jumped in and they started providing material as well. And really, much like this podcast, it's about, for me, it was more about learning. 
But through that learning, it, it opened the door to other people who had interests. And for me, that was a legacy because that led to opening the door to a course coming back that existed long ago in our school. It's called the Spanish, what's it called? The Spanish, Spanish medical terminology. No, that's our club, Spanish medical terminology. But the, the course was like Spanish medical or Spanish something. I forgot what it's called. But that course was then created. And what uh, maybe the school doesn't know is that all the material I had, I, I met up with the, the guy that who's going to teach it. He had just, he just graduated. And so this doc was like fresh graduate. He's like, I'm going to teach this course. And I go, Hey buddy, you know, I got a club. I go check this out. It was Esteban, right? Yeah, Esteban. And I get, I told Esteban, here's all my material. Shout out to Esteban. And I gave him all the material that we'd collect. By that point, it had been over a year of pure material like that we had generated. And I handed it to him. And then he took that material, manipulated, changed a few things, adapted a few things, and then he created a whole the whole course. So that was my dream. My dream, my, my, that was part of it. But the other one was to have. Uh, the school clinic to advertise Spanish speaking, you know, clinicians or students, you know, so that it would it would bring about more patients to the to the yeah. to it the is, clinic It's pretty big because, you know, it's not only they they started in the school and the school is not only full of chiropractors, but there's a phys- physical therapist, physician assistants. You well, know, now there's physical therapists. Well, I don't there's think there's occupational was. therapists now too. Well, now that's now, but back then we didn't. We yeah, didn't, but we didn't I mean, have the that. courses there. That oh, means, right. I mean, it kind of kind of trickled into yeah. teaching sp- medical Spanish to oh yeah a yeah. bunch of different professions. Yeah. Oh, we had acupuncture students as well. Oh, so, acu- yeah. Shout out yeah. to acupuncturists. Yeah. So we had acupuncture students in there. We shout had out. physical assistant, physical uh, physicians assistants, and then chiropractic students all together in a room trying to learn Spanish at a time. So it it was, it was fun, and to me that was like. I thought to myself, how amazing is this? Because that club, I, we created the, I created the club with the other guy, and that was it. And it was, I don't know, an experience that I love because, you know, we, we really, truly made a difference and made a change, at least with the school and the education um, uh, schedule that they had. So so that so that's like a big driving force for you, um, wanting to have representation for your community, right? Uh, yeah. The Latino people. Um, all, so people, all people, all people, all, people, all <laughs> Spanish speakers. But yeah, them too. Yeah. Um, so you yourself, you're from El Salvador, right? No, no, no. My family, uh, my mom and dad are from El Salvador. Um, I was born in California. Oh, okay. So how how was it for you growing up there in California? I mean, I grew up in. I'm older, right? So I grew up uh, in a time in the 90s. Back in the day. Back in the day when Tupac was alive, <laughs> and he, was, he really was. <laughs> he really was. <laughs> he alive. still is. He still is allegedly. <laughs> Uh, so that it was a time when, you know, there was a lot of the gangster rap thing was huge. Uh, let's put it this way: in middle school, there was a, a race riot. <laughs> and there was helicopters. The police were around. This is middle school we're talking about. Uh, the, you know, gang violence was rampant, and 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 so growing up in that environment, it was a little scary. I mean, I got a little bullied too, you know, by a girl. It was rough because she was a real tall girl, and I'm like, you know, I'm not that tall. I mean, you guys are both taller than me. And at that time, I was even shorter. And so that was kind of scary. So I'd stop taking the bus and just would walk. And then, you know, my parents, you know, they, they didn't, I don't think they got past high school, their high school education. So, you know, the upbringing was a little tough. I, I think most Latinos can relate. I don't know about yourself or Dr. Tony. Even Dr. Tony can relate a little bit. He's not Latino, but he, uh, or Latinx. Sorry, I might screw that up. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I, I feel that it was they were a little harsh with me but it was pretty fairly common you know you get spanked here comes that chancla here comes that bell look out dodge rope whatever mom can get a comb a brush boom you're gonna get it so that was normal i mean also the alcoholism you know and the domestic violence these are things i feel that during that time were fairly common for someone that's i guess it would be what is that is that in my first generation i, forget, I always forget that one Dr. Rivas here would be a first generation American because his parents immigrated to the United States from El Salvador and he was the first of his family to be born in the United States. Or whatever it is, sure. the, the first generation born here was me. And so my parents coming from another oh, country. Yeah, you were first generation, right? Because your uh, parents were from another country. Yeah. yeah first generation. Yeah. So then I, I coming from that, they they brought us up the best they could, at least what they knew. And so, you know. 
you, you know, things would happen. It was the best. They tried their best. And they were really tough on me, I would say. And my brother, they would compare me to my brother. And, and it's normal, right? Everyone gets kind of compared at that age. But the difference was they didn't know I had a learning disability. So that, that made things a little more difficult for me. Um, I mean, I didn't have dyslexia or, you know, these more complex, more difficult, um, you know, uh, learning disabilities. But overall, it was tough because I appear normal. I sound normal. I can talk to you. But as a child, that appearance it would uh, was not truly who I was. And so I was sensitive, you know, a bit of a crybaby at times, and so a little emotional. And that environment was really hard on me, but it made me tough in many ways, you know. It, it allowed me to get thick skin. I give Tony a hard time because I grew up in a time where um, – you know, you your parents would give you a hard time. You, your brother and your cousins and everybody would like bag on you and rag on you. They'd be like, just talking smack all the time, and then you just got used to it and you were able to defend yourself and talk smack back because otherwise you were just taken and be like, you know, crying in a corner. I suppose you know after <laughs> after getting ragged on for so long, and um, you know, and, and it's a, now it's it's not really accepted, but it's truly a form of I would say of, of endearment and just. A way to get along like I, I give Tony a hard time he's like my, he's my brother to me so then I talk to him in a in a joking way I'm a little harsh but you know, I, yeah I, mean, I, I, I was a uh, only child until I was like 14 so I'm not used yeah my, my brother's like it was like one <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't really fight back <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah exactly but yeah so the uh, so, so that, that that's kind of gonna bring you that's gonna gets me in my feels yeah <laughs> yeah so there wasn't a lot of talk about emotions like now. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like my dad was having a heart to heart talk to me. And, you know, parents didn't really tell you I love you. And, you know, it, it was just a different time as uh, to quote. Uh, what did he say? Uh, Joel, he's like, these are archaic times, bro. It was it was a time where your feelings were taking a back seat, And it was like you had to get stuff done. And, you know, it, just the way life was. And, you know, I love my parents. They, they did the best. And. Whatever happened after that, it takes some time to process and, you know, you figure it out, you know, go some therapy, you know, have a good time. I went to hypnotherapy. That's how I, you know, started all of it. But all of it is still therapy, helping others, et cetera, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I, so I got a question for you. Um, you know, so because I remember originally, was it a few months ago when you started talking about creating the podcast and then actually being here on it? Um, hi, Mom. Um, <laughs> you know, what are, what's your goals with this podcast? What, what do you, where do you see it going? Consuelo said. Oh, the, the who's Consuelo? Consuelo? She's a massage therapist, exceptional oh, wow. here at the Serenity Center. But anyway, the Serenity Center massage. <laughs> uh, she, uh, she said, you know, keep an open mind and see where it takes you. And and really, it's again, it's much like the club I started, much like this uh, profession. It's about having fun for me. It's like having fun helping people informing people it's it's that what are you informing them lifestyle about? Well, anything and everything i mean just like i would inform my patients at the office you know uh, you know you're under stress you should really consider this yiz whatever whatever you can imagine but it's really to provide the audience with an insight of variety of treatments not just chiropractic not just massage uh, not just acupuncture not just it's it's anything and everything under the sun that actually helps someone. So maybe you go to your medical doctor or maybe you go to your chiropractor and that isn't helping. And maybe you have to go to the physical therapist because that's going to help you. Or the physical therapist didn't help you, so you go to the chiropractor. Or the acupuncturist was actually the one that helped you the most. Or maybe it was trying, you know, ayahuasca. I don't know. Or maybe it was going to better help or seeing a therapist. It's anything and everything that will help a person who's in a situation that's unfamiliar. So if, if I'm in unfamiliar territory and I feel that uh, the resources I have are not helping me, then I need to find another alternative or another option. And so through this podcast, I feel that maybe we can bring light to other information. I mean, like one of the uh, young ladies that I just saw at the Hollywood Bowl, who's amazing, was Carla Morrison. And she talks about that. And that's what their music's about. And, and really bringing uh, to light that we are struggling. Some of us are struggling more than others. And we need to be supported and helped in ways that we may not be accepting of, but if we give it a chance, maybe we're going to find the answers that we need. And, you know, the universe will provide. We'll find a way, you know. Yeah. So, you know, just have fun, really. For me to learn, I want to learn. That's that's all I really want. Oh, okay, super it's cool. Especially from, you can know. You, can you um, keep me HIPAA in mind? 
Can you do, do you have any like uh, particular patient patient case that really kind of blew you away with you know like what yeah what someone can do with just their hands? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, there was Doctor Michael McMurray. I did my internship with him, and he he was he showed me a jeez, oh, was it what, what's that uh, technique called? Neurology, clinical neurology. No, wait, no. Uh, uh, oh, you talking about chiropractic neurology? Chiropractic or, or neurology. Fun- yeah. Functional, functional neurology. Functional neurology. Nowadays. Yeah, I forget what it's called. But anyway, he he went ahead. You want to see a cool trick? And I go, yeah. So he grabs his patient. This patient can't lift their arm up. She's like, uh, this is high as I can get it. He goes, now check this out. He lays the patient down, and he does a manual occiput adjustment. Click. And they, all right, get up. Now move your arm. She's like, uh, oh. I can move it higher now. And I was blown away. I was like, he just adjust. He just adjusted this individual, and like magic, their arm came up higher. And 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 they couldn't. I mean, it was still in pain, but they were the range of motion increased in, instantaneously. And I was like, what is this voodoo you're doing? Tell me more about this. And you know, th- that's one example. And then in our office, we you see it every day. I mean, you know, the person that's been on pills for a long time. The individual that didn't know, the one that just deals with the pain, doesn't want to take pills, or they're allergic to medication, yeah. etc. And then we do a few things and adjust them, and pow, like the pain is magically gone. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I remember because I, I didn't grow up here in the states, um, and so I didn't really have much exposure to chiropractors. And so even when I gra- when I was graduating, I started treating school. You know, you get all these stories about like. Oh, is it just placebo? What's going on? And then when you start treating patients and actually getting results, I'm like, it's, it's, it's not placebo because there's you, there's days where someone comes in and they can barely even walk, and then by the end of it, they're like touching their toes and jumping, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, and then like it's some pretty, you know, this placebo is like crack cocaine heroin level right there, <laughs> um, you know. Obviously, there are in patient severities that require you know higher level medical attention um but i would say for 70 80 percent of the general population having any sort of pain if it's like low back pain neck pain elbows shoulders knees toes even your jaw um uh, we could do a lot of good you know and it's it it blows me away every day you know and i know it blows you away too i mean you you work like 24 7 it's it's magical. It's it's a magical experience. I can't even begin. I was uh, describing it to my um, I had a family friend, Teresa came as a family friend. I went to see her in California, and she was like, so I was kind of describing what the process is like. It's like I'm in a room. There's a there's a hole. That we'll call it the door, and people keep coming through that door, and I don't know why, but they keep coming through that door, and I just stay in that room, and they come in and out. And they don't stop coming from the moment I... Uh, some days I start at 7 and end at 5, and they are not stopping. They're just nonstop. And and I'm thinking to myself, how did this happen? You know, it, it's mind-blowing. And, and, you know, obviously Tony helped me out because he does all the marketing and he does an exceptional job. He's Market great. Market kings. Yeah, so <laughs> he's exceptional. <laughs> and so that... But, but it's still mind-blowing because sometimes it's just, oh, my tia told me about you. Or my grandma said this, or my neighbor, or my coworker, or you know, word of mouth is powerful. So, uh, d- d- on a day to day basis, it's it's pretty magical. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, quite it, a fun job, I would yeah, say. It's, it's a, a career fun job, and it's honestly, it's 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 a huge blessing. It's it's amazing to you know shout out to our, all of our patients and the community itself because it's you know. I feel so thankful. You yeah, know, being 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 that person in the room, you know, and yeah. being like, dang, all these people are coming here. Yeah, I feel like Elvis. Yeah, well, I mean, I always tell the patients, I'm 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 part celebrity, part you know, I'm part of the strip because, you know, if if my performance sucks, guess what? No one's gonna pay for the show, right? And you know, can't do it, can't have that. So, but yeah, he's a comedian too. Yeah, on the weekends. No, I'm just kidding. On the weekends. Yeah, and so. Speaking of professions, um, do you see yourself ever going into a, a different prese- profession? Would you always want to be a chiropractor? I mean, I think teaching is something I've got I've done before in the past. I did. Uh, I was an instructor for South Bay Massage College, the good ones, of course, the good professors. And uh, 
I did that. I also tutored a little bit when I was in chiropractic college. So eventually some sort of opportunity in teaching and whether it may be body work or whatever, anything just because it, what happens is what you don't realize is that when you teach and Tony can, can tell me if he agrees with this or not, but when you are a tutor or, or teaching someone, you're essentially sharpening your, your skills. You're becoming sharper in your, in your profession or whatever you're teaching and whatever that, uh, application of that information is being applied to you're just so much sharper because you know everything now you're like okay this attaches to this this goes here this goes there and you don't have to think twice or look it up because it's it's just sitting there yeah mind. i think um a lot of times you uh, they cover probably a cognitive dissonance or or where you you're like oh i know everything about that and then they're like okay explain it to me and you're like Oh, okay. There, that's where the gap in my knowledge it lies. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you're like, okay, if you can explain it, you you really know it. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I try to simplify everything. That's why I want to teach because if I can explain it, I try to simple. I try to make everything as simple as possible to the for the patient and for myself more importantly. So when I describe your spine, when I describe a condition, I'm making it as simple as possible. It's it's this this. I like to use uh, an example. It's like the hammock principle. Very it's like when when you don't have any injury but you have maybe you've been using something too much i call it the hammock principle you hang a hammock from corner to corner in a room and then you sit in the hammock that would represent the muscle and it wraps around you so that's it tightening and then you have at the ends of it you, you have the attachment sites where it attaches well where are you going to have the most tension when that muscle contracts and gets smaller wherever it connects right on the corners of that room and generally when people say they have pain that's where the pain is. So when I tell people that, they're like, oh, I didn't think about it like that. I go, me neither. Till the, like a couple of years ago, I was like, it's what makes sense to me. I've never heard that one before. That's really good. Oh, you didn't know that one? Um, yeah, yeah. I, don't I, I can't there, there teach you go. all my tricks. All right. so cool. uh, I'm, I'm going to use that in my next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had a... Uh, oh, yeah. If you can, like, if you were going to do... A summary of who you are professionally and non-professionally in like two sentences how would you how would you like describe yourself two sentences yeah professionally first though. professionally uh, just really short i would say old <laughs> oh, uh, oh. damn shots fired uh, let me think i would uh don't don't worry viewers 41 is the new 21 okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can make all these viewers like this yeah right well i mean yeah i look a little younger i oh, you got the fountain of youth i would say someone wrote on my oh by the way activator which is one of the techniques i'm yeah, yeah, I've, no. I'm certified in uh i'll never forget it was the front she's worked at the front office when i did my internship with the san jose sharks chiropractor down in uh, chiropractic solutions in campbell california she said you are so lucky. Your patients are very lucky. There's no stone unturned. Like, essentially, I think that would be the best no, no description. No stone unturned. Yeah, because I'm constantly, like with you, you know, I'm like trying to dissect it yeah. in real time. Like, okay, what is under there? What layers there? What's next? And that's how I think professionally I am. But it, it's, it comes with a level of compassion and like. Yeah, you know, yeah. I can you know. see that. Yeah, you're very, um, from my experience, you're very, you, you interrogate. And then you, and then once once you figure it out, you're like, stop it, it hurts, stop it. You're being, you are, it hurts. So you, oh, oh, of course it hurts. You see what you're doing? You, you, <laughs> you stop it. Um, and so, which is good, because you know, I feel like a lot of times people need need to hear that. It's like, it's like, well, well, you know, you're, you're you're running in circles, man. No, like, like obviously it, it, your your issue is that, I and mean, we both know it. So you're gonna keep having this issue if you don't yeah. change it. And yet you've never been scared to just kind of look someone in the eye and tell them that. Yeah, yeah. You know, but I mean, yeah, because we're we're pushing the responsibility of the care on the patient. I can't, I can't take on all your stress and all your life and be like, hey, man, it's all my fault. You didn't feel better. I will, I will admit when maybe the treatments didn't work out or there was something we we've tried everything, but it it's a it's a team effort, you know. We both have to work at it, and so, yeah. yeah. Actually, speaking of which, because you, uh, we were the your first exposure to chiropractic, right? Yeah, right, Alex. Yeah. What, what, 
was your first thoughts like how how was that experience for you so like the begin the very beginning at the very beginning the yeah. first time i Be- came be- in before you even came in once you knew you were coming in um well first i was i was scared you know i was like i was like i don't i don't want i don't want to get like adjusted and i'm paralyzed in a wheelchair that was my very first thought <laughs> i was scared um Gosh, classic which i feel like is a very common like misconception right because yeah. that was my very first thought about going to chiropractor i'm like oh i don't want to i don't want to be paralyzed you know <laughs> no uh, no one wants yeah. to be. okay um but once i actually came in and i got adjusted i'm like oh this isn't so bad i thought it was gonna i thought it was gonna hurt i thought you guys were gonna be like like tearing me apart like i thought it was gonna i thought it was gonna hurt but i i felt i felt really good yeah yeah, we, we save those moves for later when you feel better. <laughs> yeah, once you can take it. I'd say, um, you know, and this mainly for the audi- audiences, uh, it, you know, the, the, the risk of paralysis and stroke in chiropractic care, mainly the adjustments, because chiropractic care is more than just the adjustments, exists. It's there. It's very small. It's really small. I would say um, uh, just using w- one corporation as an example the joint chiropractic does 10 million adjustments a year and they'll get a case like that once every three four years and that's just one company with 800 locations Uh, we're talking about across all of america you know it it, there's millions of adjustments before someone gets hurt you know and you compare that to other treatments for you know low back pain neck pain etc etc um and you get kidney issues with your ibuprofen you get addiction issues and overdoses with your oxycontins um, and your opioids you know and so when it comes to a risk factor i'd say chiropractic is pretty low risk um you know especially if you go to a good one your risks are pretty they're even smaller and let more minute uh i think a lot of the Atten- media media attention is you know of course, of course it's going to pop off online you know someone basically steven seagal someone else you know <laughs> like like it's the internet um where at, whenever someone gets hurt that's what everyone wants to hear about um but you know it, the risks do exist uh they are very rare and there's risks with every treatment that you receive whether it's from a medical doctor a physical therapist you know or a back alley sobador <laughs> no, let's not go yeah. there <laughs> but our insurance is pretty low so yeah, uh, that's the that's biggest that's the, the biggest, biggest thing, the insurance yeah. agencies think it's not risky no yeah the malpractice compared to every other doctor or ours is the lowest yeah. and then i always tell patients yeah. is that um you know i'm not going to hurt you if uh, that that would be bad for business <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so there's always there's always a risk factor for basically any any type of treatment you're receiving, any type of doctor you go to, yeah, any type yeah. of drug you take. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that and that's the case for anyone. And I think that's why like going into this profession, at least for myself, I I went into it as you could tell, like you said, with the people that I cared about that were around me, and the techniques that I picked up were specifically because at the time my wife had spinal stenosis. So I've, I, I started this out of love, you know? I have an individual that has this condition. Well, what things can I do? Mm-hmm. What can I provide? And in the process of trying to learn these things at a point in your life where, you, you know, in, in your career in college, it, it, it takes you down these places that you never imagined. And so, because I took courses in Activator, it's a technique, a low force adjustment technique, and then Cox uh, Flexion Distraction, which is decompressive and still relative, it's gentle as well. That led me down the path of meeting the San Jose Sharks chiropractor. And he called me, like, which is wild, right? You would think, I was trying to call him actually, that I was literally gonna call him the week, the following week, and then he called me and he said, hey, you're an interesting guy. I was like, What's I was like, who's this? How much did they pay you to get you on the phone and say this stuff? And then we talked and, you know, he flew me up. I watched him and, and, you know, I was able to intern eventually when I when it was time. But you don't know what opportunities are going to pop up, you know. And the relationship I had ended. But nevertheless, like, though that skill set that I picked up along the way has managed to help you. And just like I told you, remember that video where I was like, hey, look, we made a video in, in school and I showed you the video. You were wearing a blue shirt and so was the guy in the video. 
Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Oddly creepy, right? And it was about spinal stenosis, and it was exactly your scenario. And I told you the reason it was in that scenario is because my ex-wife had it. So that for whatever reason, the universe just keeps connecting me with this type of uh, a patient. And so I had to learn these techniques, and now I'm able to like help you and help others. But that, that video was pretty creepy, though, because I was like, dude, you're wearing that blue yeah, shirt. Yeah, I was wearing a blue shirt. I have the same condition. Uh, I'm just very lucky to have been treated by Dr. Rivas because he has experience with this condition. Yeah. Um, and I remember when I, when I mentioned to you my fear of, like, getting paralyzed from treatment, you're like, you're like oh, no, um, if you want to paralyze someone, you have to do it on purpose and you like explain the whole process of trying to paralyze someone I'm like it's, it's kind of creepy that you know exactly how to paralyze well, someone I mean it's not it doesn't take a genius man you just drop some weight that you're not supposed to in a certain weight uh, an immense amount not not just a little and then it, it you know it's going to cause some damage man it's, yeah. it's going to happen always be nice to your chiropractor I, I want to know a little bit about your kind of like struggles that you've had kind of developing as a person you yeah. know i know it's a, a little bit a lot to share on the podcast so you don't have to share it all but share your kind of deepest give the audience secrets. a little bit of a glimpse yeah. into your soul into your soul I, I what is the deepest darkest i guess i didn't say darkest there you go. Oh, that's, sorry <laughs> somebody was whispering in my in my good ear over here on the right uh as a person I would say forgiving. Well, the first thing I you got to start with the family. I would say forgiving, like your family, like when they, like I said, like the examples I gave. You know, you you are part of this uh, experience where, you know, they're angry and they're letting their frustrations out on you, and you have to forgive. I mean, that's probably was the hardest thing ever. You know, you can be very upset with your immediate family, mother, father, whoever, uncle, and you you have to let go because. It requires energy to sit there and be like, you know what? I hate Alex. This guy is just so annoying. Oh my God! Don't talk to me. You're, uh, you're, you're getting on my last nerve, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it requires energy for me to be that upset because I'm allowing someone to 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 make me that upset. You know, I'm responsible for my own emotions, not him, not you, me. And I think that was one of the hardest lessons because when you would see this relative or someone like for myself, I would be very upset, and and that's hard because you can't live like that and so once i forgave they say the forgiveness isn't for you know the person it's for you so that you can be like i'm okay with this now everything's all right so i would say that was probably one of the hardest things because even to this day you know my family is indifferent or not indifferent but you know still holds a grudge with certain people within my family I'm not going to get into details they know who they are and and that's it's unhealthy you know and it and it's difficult because you know, I, I, I try to stay away from drama, smack talking. You know, I, I don't talk negatively about anyone. Anyone I do, it's Tony, but it's just because I see him as my brother. So I'm just giving him a hard time. But yeah. I would say that forgiveness is probably uh, when you achieve that and you reflect on your life, I'd say that was probably one of the biggest things. And then uh, the ego, you know, just letting go of the ego. Even this year alone, you know, working with you, letting go of that ego and realizing, like, I don't have to be the best. I want to be the best. But when you see someone next to you, you're like, no, I could do better than you, Tony. Get out of here. I'm the best. Mm -hmm. But y I've come to realize now because you told me, I was like, I wanted to start, Tony, I want to start my own clinic. And you're like, Tony, what are you doing? You're like, that's not going to work out, bro. And I was like, it will, but it's going to kill me. So I thought about it more and more. And I go, no, you're right. You know, the more I stay with you, we stay together, the easier it is for everyone. You know, we, yeah, it's, we, it's, it's building a team. Yeah. I mean, a hospital is not just one person. Yeah, exactly. You know? Well, you know, but I come from a, a time and an era, at least in my mind, where it's like, you know, I want to be Michael Jordan. I want to be Kobe. You know, I want to be this individual that they're, is nonstop. They're all still on teams, though. Yeah, but I want to be that guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm telling that too. Yeah, but you, you get what I'm saying. It, it's just the strive to continue to succeed and want to be this this person that's bigger than everyone. But then I realize it's like you said, it's it's a team effort. And I think that th at least this year in this practice with him, that's what I've learned the most within the last year. Because we've only been open what since year. February, a little over a year, year a year and a half, year yeah. and a half, which is bizarre in itself. But it feels like forever. Yeah, yeah, I think that, and you know. You, you, when you're ready, you're ready. Sometimes you people don't let go until they're much older, or not at all. It's, uh, 
I would say it, if um, you know, and this feels like a like a diary or something. But if you can, if if there was a twenty eight year old, the twenty eight year old Rico watching this right now, you know, with all of his like, um, you know, I assume like insecurities about his learning disability, um, and not sure if he could do what you're doing right now. What would you tell him? Like, because you you've come a long way, and you you know you really show that like, you know, even you you can push through and you still end up on top you know and not not only just be a g- good whatever you are and like as a person out there for you people but you can be a great whatever you'll be you know as long as you have that passion right yeah what, what, what would you say to yourself like you give yourself some advice i kind of wouldn't because that would you know given the multiverse i, I would <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say it would change <laughs> it would change the direction of my life drastically and I may be dead you know mm-hmm. but no I I, I, I like truly that. feel that it's 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 I, I can't I I would say if I had to relive it again I'd go through everything exactly the same because that means it led me to this moment you know and I told that to Monte the other day our front staff who shout out to Monte she's the best and that message was she goes you know what would you do differently or you know I'd be like nothing because if I wouldn't, I, if I would have changed anything, I would not be where I am. You know, I always thought like, dude, I wish I could be Tony. I wish I could be, how old are you? 26? Okay. I wish I could be 26 and be a chiropractor. Or I wish I was 17 and I could be Alex sitting here doing this podcast and like learning about all this stuff before I even get into the uh, profession. You know, I wish I could be you. I wish I could be you. But uh, I start to realize like it wouldn't lead me to where I am today, possibly. It would change my, I don't know, maybe I'd end up in Colorado. Who knows? But now that I'm here, I can expose myself to you guys and share my knowledge with you guys. And you can make that leap sooner than I did if you want. Or you can struggle for the next few years and be like, damn, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. I like money. And then you go down that path, you know, which is not wrong, but it's just a direction sometimes we have to go. It's it's the way it goes. So I, advice, I would just say, honestly, just listen to yourself and keep exploring these ideas because from the age of i'd say 20 and on i constantly ask myself like what should i be doing what i feel like i should be doing something else what is it one day i'm going to figure it out one day i'm going to figure out what i should be doing with my life there's more to this life than this and it was constantly asking myself year after year you know peeling away the layers of who i thought i i should be you know the 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 family just trauma just peeling away those layers and realizing that you're you're you are your father you are your mother in many ways and trying to shed that layer off of you because that's not maybe who you want to be or maybe you want to keep certain parts of that but i would say just try to be continue to be an honest person and keep searching keep looking do not give up find what it is that excites you and is is St- is is a part of what you value in life you know because that that's what's going to lead you to success i feel yeah no that's great wow uh, i would tell i would tell myself to you know invest in bitcoin yeah but, well yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah of course bro it's all about money over here with dr tony <laughs> no, no, that's not true <laughs> <laughs> I would tell him to go find the lamp and rub it and give me all the money I can get. <laughs> just because yeah, I'm Arab, it's yeah. gotta be a lamp. <laughs> I see myself as Aladdin yeah. here. It's okay. Oh, Don't yeah. worry. You can no, be the no, genie, no. actually. Right. If he's you look wearing, at the colors, he's, he's he's wearing blue. First century Aladdin is Will Smith. Okay? <laughs> he slaps it's people. Okay. No, not him. So, like, <laughs> I'm gonna say this. You know, I, I see myself as Aladdin in this in this uh, in this situation. Oh, yeah. And if for all you viewers that are not uh, you know not able to see this, Dr. Tony sitting on my left and, and he's <laughs> <laughs> and he's currently wearing this blue outfit and, and <laughs> dr tony he's he's a, he's a tall dude he's wearing blue scrubs he's six three uh, six three I'm and we're, obviously we're, yeah. I, poop. <laughs> <laughs> I leave that to him but even then he's not small enough but the point is is that you're about six three to 200 something so it's like you're a big dude. You're the genie in this one, and it truly he is. He's he not only a genie; he's a genius because he's the one that got me here. He's the one that's that's allowed me to like open the door so I can be a part of this system and this this whole thing. So in many ways, you are the genie. I, 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 I he granted your wishes. He granted my wishes I, I, because I, I, I couldn't do it without you, man. I mean, uh, one thing. Uh, 
one thing I do well is I, I just keep working, but you know, you, you, if you're a lot of your vision really helped form this too. Cause there was a lot of times where I, I was like not willing to move any for any more forward. And you're like, I, I quit my job, Anthony. I moved out here. I'm working in this clinic of yours. You, you, you quit that job and work, come here or else. And I'm like, okay, I guess I got to do it now. Yeah, cause, right. cause Rico's like, like, Rico just went, went like, you know, he, he didn't, pulled the Las Vegas right there. He just went went all in, yeah. and he was like, "I'm I'm doing this, or I'm or I'm going homeless. It's 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 all I got." Yeah. And um, I, th- I think that really motivated me. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like if if it wasn't for you, like you, you changed a lot of the way the way I I think about things last year. You know, I'm a lot more like inquisitive on like what I want to be happy and. I I don't put up with other people kind of walking mm-hmm. over me anymore. You know, I'm kind of like I cut it off. Like, okay, this is my time. I'm done now. I think going to Cairo school and meeting like you and Dylan and everyone was a big highlight of my life because I got to, you know, get to see the same people every day for the first time. You know, I'd, and really kind of be surrounded by people with big visions that rubbed off on me. You know, um, absolutely. Yeah, their, their visions. Yeah, vision. <laughs> vision. Yeah, he he touched on something hilarious, by the way, which was there was a guy, uh, Rob, who's out in Utah practicing. Rob Cash, Cash, Rob Cash. Uh, yeah, and so he he would sit there. We would line up on a table like this, and we would have a dissection class. So you'd have a, a cadaver out, laid out with strings attached to it, with a tag, and there'd be a, this notebook. You open it up. And in the notebook, there was two questions. One string goes to one, one string goes to the other. And so I would, I would be in line, and the way it would work is you get, is it like two minutes, one minute per question, right? And you're sitting there, and you would look at it, and you'd be like, all right, fill out this Scantron, and which one is it, right? And so I would look at it, and Rob, let's say, is here, and the line's moving from, from left to right. And I'm, I sit there and would look at it and be like, what the hell is this? I have no idea. It could be that one. It could be that. I can't even tell what that is. I was like, eh. I'll just wait, wait till I get my extra time. Then I'll take a look at it later. Meanwhile, Rob was over here looking over my shoulder. He's like, and this guy would be like, oh my God, look at this guy. He's like, he's not even answering questions. What the hell is going on here? How is this possible? And I was like, bro, it's it's like I get extra time. And everyone would leave. And when everyone would exit after the time was up with everyone who didn't have a learning disability, they would exit the room and they'd be like, all right, you have 30 minutes. Go back to the questions you need to go back to. I'd be like, all right, cool. So then I go back and then, you know, do my test and finish. And I come out with a big smile. And then I see everyone outside, like Rob, hyperventilating and like, oh, my God, would you put that? Oh, no, you put that. Oh, I put this. Oh, and everyone's stressed out. It's just it's super stressful. But it, it would it, other people would tell me they'd see me and look at me and, and feel the same way. And I'd be like, well, and they'd be like, I wish I had the time. you did. I wish you ha- I had a learning disability. And I'd look at them and be like, Nah, bro, that means you'd have to go through everything I went through. And I don't think you want that. I'm like, mm-hmm. eh, maybe, maybe not. But yeah. No, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It, I mean, it's it can tough. be. But you know. yeah, you'll know when you get there, Alex. Yeah. Alex is going to be a doctor, too. So. Yeah, you can push it. You can push it out slow. You can push it out fast as long as it gets out. <laughs> you're, you're, you're <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what he's talking about. <laughs> is, this, is this a poop metaphor? <laughs> Or is this a vomit <laughs> metaphor? It was a poop metaphor, know, yeah, but exactly. it, it sounded better in my head. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it, it sounded terrible on the way out, by the way. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> See what it, yeah, yeah. anyway. Yep. Uh. <laughs> Gonna light a match now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, I think we, we hit all the questions, right? I think yeah. it's there. And ending it off with the poop joke. Yeah, is, okay, is that you want to end it? We, we, no, we can kind of get that <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I kind of like, you might want to save that. You might want to save that one. That was a good one. So I just want to say I hope you guys all enjoyed it. And and uh, for you guys watching it, hope it was okay. Um, yeah. And thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to Alex for being here. And thank you for spending time. He's in high school and he's taking a day off in the middle of his week to hang out with us. So thank you so much. Yeah, it's... it's uh, Almost 10 p.m. I got school tomorrow. I got to wake up at 5 in the morning. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> all for you. All, all for you. Thank you, guys. America. I appreciate it. And countries. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Thank you, guys. And uh, I don't know the sign-off is, but. This is Reframing Modern Medicine with Dr. Ricardo Rivas. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Dr. Rivas currently works with Dr. Tony at the Las Vegas Chiropractor. 
If you would like more information on Dr. Rivas and the Las Vegas Chiropractor, please visit www.thelasvegaschiro.com. And if you would like to check out the first episode of our podcast, please visit our page on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. This is Alex signing off for Dr. Rivas. Thanks for listening and or watching this second episode of Reframing Modern Medicine, and we hope to see you again soon.